Next, uh, here in France, an Iraqi refugee thought to be a former senior member of the Islamic State group has been arrested in Paris and indicted on suspicion of war crimes. This over his alleged involvement in a massacre back in his country. Now, here with the details is France 24's uh, Wasim Nasser. Now, Wasim, walk us through what more do we know about this person and what is he suspected of doing? Yes, actually, uh, this person uh, who goes by the name Ahmed H, we're gonna, not going to give his full name, he was born in 85 or 83. So there's two dates of birth uh, like uh, that we are uh, aware of. So he's in, in his uh, mid-30s. He's not that uh, that old. And um, he arrived uh, he arrived in, in France uh, uh, in 2016, maybe, 2015, 2016. And then, um, so he got, in June 2017, he got his status of uh, refugee, political refugee. Then uh, the Iraqi, the Iraqi, uh, the Iraqi government uh, asked Interpol to uh, to have more information about him because they accuse him of being, as you said, uh, a member of the Islamic State and that he's been implicated in the massacre of Spiker, where more than 1,700 uh, military Iraqi military were killed uh, by the uh, by the jihadists. So an inquiry, an investigation was opened here in France back in September 2017. And then he was arrested in March 2018, and then uh, because the, the, the because in France we have the law uh, you can judge someone if he's on French soil if he did something a crime against humanity even if it's it was made in another country so this is the thing now, but um, uh, the proof of him being really implicated isn't here because he says that no. He didn't have anything to do with the spiker, uh, with the massacre uh, uh, in Spiker. Uh, I got to see some. Um, I got to see his photo, which I compared to the footage uh, issued at the time. Two footage issued at the time of the massacre, and we cannot see him. We cannot and and identify him uh, in a formal way uh, on those uh, on those on this footage. And this is why the justice also is trying to to identify him on uh, the footage of the of the massacre. And on the other hand, the only person in Iraq that witnessed again him was executed in back in 2015 so executed by the Iraqi uh, the Iraqi uh, uh, authorities a question you know and you mentioned during this process that indeed his political refugee status he was mm. granted that mm. in the first uh, that's also has to have authorities worried here just about the process in itself that this wasn't flagged up before is there any concern yes, because, about that because because he didn't um, listen it's not the first time that they give this status and then they take it back uh, it happened at least 10 times since the beginning of the years with other refugees from Iraq or uh, from Syria. And because also his story holds, mm, he says that, uh, okay, so he was born in Samarra. He grew up in Samarra. It's a town in, in Iraq. He says that he went to Tikrit in 2006. He was in his, in his 20s. And then he says that in 2006, his father and his brother were killed by the jihadis. And he even says that in 2007, he was working for the American army, the U.S. army in Iraq. Then he says that in 2011, he worked for Iraqi authorities, as a, not as a spy, but as an informant. Then he says that in 2012, yes, he was arrested for terror charges by the Iraqi authorities, but he says that he was trying to revive a Ba'ath cell, you know, the Ba'ath, the party of the, uh, of the late uh, Iraqi president Saddam, Saddam Hussein. So he says that he was not a jihadi, he was a Ba'athist. And then he was in jail from 2012 till 2014 when the Islamic State took the Crete. So the Iraqi authorities say that the, jihad the jihadis freed him and he worked with them since then. But he says that when the jihadis came into town, the prison, the guards of the prison left the prison. So he left with other prisoners, which could hold two. And then he says he went to Kurdistan and the Kurdish authorities wanted him to go back to infiltrate the Islamic State in Syria, which he didn't do. And then he left for Europe arriving here. Okay, so as of now, once again, he says he did no wrongdoing. Yes, French authorities so there's two to stories, and today okay. the challenge is to prove one of those uh, two stories. All right, excellent. Wasim, thank you very much for thank that. Thank you.